There are currently five recognizable top-end series of Yonex badminton shoes out there. So where does the Cascade Drive fit in all this? And do we actually even need it? Plus, I had a problem with the shoe and I'll show you why in the video. If you've not participated in my Solid Bad giveaway, we are giving away a Victor Axelson and Lakshasen signed poster and a Team Japan shirt signed by Chiharu Shida, Yuta Watanabe and Nozomi Okuhara. Go check it out here and here's an extra 10 entries for you with this secret code SOLIDBADROCKS as a single word. Good luck. So I'm not sure if any of you noticed, but I've sat on the fence about this shoe review for a long time. So long that if you actually look closely enough, I actually had the shoe in the thumbnail of my review video of the White Tiger 65Z as well as its cheaper cousin, the 65X. So check it out here by the way. So why didn't I publish my review of the Cascade Drive along the 65Z and the 65X at the same time? If you're someone like me who's familiar with Yonex's shoe range and if you wanted something that's super light, super fast shoes, you go straight to the Aeros models. If you want plenty of stability with firm cushioning, you will go straight to the Eclipsions. If you're looking for ultimate cushioning, go straight for the power cushion comforts. If you're looking for something that's super comfortable with a nice fit, with plenty of good support, go straight to the world famous and pro's favorite, the 65 series. And finally, if you're looking to add a little bit more innovation with the boa dials, or just want to be super fast at lacing up your shoes, go straight for the infinities. As a side note, I really like the boa dials after having worn a pair of the Yonex Safe Run 350 running shoes for the last few months. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys want me to do a review on this guy. So as you can see, there are already plenty of series within Yonex's offerings. And so where does the Cascade Drive comes in? I had a look at Yonex Japan's website and it wasn't to be found there. And a quick look on Yonex.com showed that it's listed as an all round model pair of shoes. So in the same categories as the 65s. So in the meantime, Time, let's take a quick look at the Cascade Drive and what's different about it compared to other traditional Yonex Bampton shoes. I think the first thing you will notice from the Cascade Drive is how much plasticky synthetic rubber like material that is on the upper outer side of the shoe. I believe Yonex calls it a synthetic leather but it certainly feels more rubber than leather to me. It feels smooth and will certainly be durable, so that's a plus point for all of us. I certainly love the gold Yonex lettering that appears on both sides of the shoe. On the inside section of the shoe, the gold Yonex logo and lettering is stuck or glued onto the shoe, whilst on the outside, it's certainly molded as part of the synthetic outer material that I just mentioned earlier on. So when I ran my fingers through that section, it certainly felt sharp as the edges were part of the solid synthetic rubber outer material, but it should not pose any problem as you're not using the shoe to kick a ball or anything like that. Again, gold on dark colour is super, super cool. One more section which stuck out for me was the nose on the heel support section, and I was super certain it was going to cause me fitting issues when I come to wear them. More on that later on. Quick final bits on the shoe include a plastic section in the middle of the outsole of the shoe, and no carbon fibre looking plate as per other high-end models, whilst having Yonex's previous traditional high-end outsole, the hexagon shape outsole. The Cascade Drive doesn't have any power cushion plus, which is Yonex's higher-end power cushion material in both its heel or forefoot section of the shoe. There are also plenty of mesh areas on the shoe, especially around the ankle as well as the tongue, and the shoe certainly feels a bit more rigid than the Aerus and 65 Model Z, so ventilation around that shoe should not be an issue. I then took a quick look at the insole and was very surprised to find that the Cascade Drive shoe had such a basic insole. The insole surface is even smoother than the ones found in cheaper models such as the 65X as well. Yonex marketed this insole as a memory foam insole, but it felt super thin with a super smooth surface. The surface material reminded me of polyester, which is a material often found in our badminton shirts, so super slippery and smooth. I'll tell you how they perform later on. The base of the Cascade Drive is also sealed without any mesh ventilation holes as found on the 65Z and Eclipsions previously, but as mentioned before, there are plenty of mesh around the mid upper area side of the shoe, so no problems there. In terms of weight, the Cascade Drive weighed in at 670 grams a pair at 28 centimeters in size. In comparison, the 65Z White Tiger came in slightly heavier at 681 grams at the same size. And finally, the Aerus Z, which is famous for being super lightweight, came in at almost 100 grams lighter at 576 grams. So there's a good benchmark there. So how did the shoe perform? 
It didn't turn out too great for me, unfortunately. Remember how slippery it was in the insoles? I came off a two hour session with huge blisters underneath both my big toes, as well as my nails on my toes being super sore after sliding within the shoe. I tried everything I can to limit the sliding by tightening my shoelaces even further, and unfortunately it didn't make much of a difference there. However, in the Cascade Drive's defense, besides my sliding, Everything else was fine and I was actually surprised at how well the shoe fitted for me. The goblin's nose at the back did not catch anything and it actually made wearing the shoes easier by acting like a little tab for you to pull and push on. Cushioning felt firm and supportive so no issue with that at all. The outer as predicted looked well and should last well for those seeking better durability compared to softer leathery materials. Right, back onto the insoles. As they were the predominant issues for me with my experience with the Cascade Drive, I took the memory insoles out and swapped them for the wavy insoles found in the 65Z and the Eclipsions. I really like the wavy insoles as they're really grippy and when worn with thick grippy socks, they feel great. And so here's a super sophisticated experiment that I did with a one pound coin to show you the difference in grippiness in both insoles. You can see the coin doesn't slide around as easily with the wavy insoles compared to the smooth memory foam insole. And once I've swapped the insoles, the Cascade Drives was very pleasant to play in and I tested it again over further few sessions on court and I did not have any issues with banging my toes or blisters occurring due to the sliding. Problem solved. I do however want to add that Yonex marketed the casket drive more like an intermediate mid-high-end badminton shoe where you can even wear it out for a casual walk and to that extent perhaps influence the choice of the smooth insole. I personally prefer smooth insoles for walks and casual wear but for badminton which we go through so much start-stop movements certainly felt like a bad choice, at least for me. I certainly prefer my shoes gripping onto my foot and toes when I'm on court and not slide at all. So if you have a pair of Cascade Drives and have the same sliding issues I did, swap onto a pair of grippy insoles and that should hopefully solve your problem. I certainly hope to see Yonex deciding on which direction they want to go for the second generation of the Cascade Drives. Are they looking to be a cool casual pair of shoes which can see someone hop onto a badminton court for a quick game or a fully dedicated badminton shoes with futuristic and sharp looks? I don't think they can have both, especially if they're going to be marketed at the prices which are relatively close to the top end badminton shoes. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think and check out my other Yonex badminton shoe reviews here and I will see you in the next one.